So what were we discussing in the last class? So DC transfer characteristics of sinus inverter. DC transfer characteristics of an sinus inverter. Of a CMOS inverter. Okay. Uh, what does this mean? So for different V in what will be the V out? Uh, for different values of V in, what will be the V out? And the input is stable and the output is expected to be stable. Am I right? Yes. Sir. This is something like a bias current simulation. Okay, what is the what will be the current flowing? What will be the uh, what will be the state of my system if my VN is at some particular level. Okay. And we saw that at different values of VN, my system, uh, you know, some devices were in cutoff or linear or saturation and so on, due to which I had a certain, certain kind of a current waveform arising out of it. You remember that? We said that in this thing, the current will be like very high over here and then at E again, it will be zero. You remember this? Yes, sir. And we also said that while this is a V in over V out kind of a curve, we could also have it as a uh, V out over uh, timing kind of a curve. You remember that? That I could actually say that my V in is moving like this. So this is point A, this is point B, this is point C, this is point D, and this is point E. So what happens? The current at A is, is plotted here. Current at B is plotted here. Current at C is plotted here. Current at D is plotted here. And then current at E is plotted here. And I can get actually the timing uh, waveform for the current also from this curve itself. If I have the timing waveform of the input. Are you able to see this? We discussed this part also. Yes. And we also discussed that, that this is one reason why we want rise time and fall times to be sharp, to be steep. Hmm? So that we have lesser current flowing through the system or the lesser duration for which this very high current would flow. You remember this? Yes, sir. Hmm. Now, so let us keep this learning uh, with us. We will pick it up in a, just a little while when we talk about transient analysis, uh, but uh, we will not talk about the same thing again. We will talk about other aspects of transient analysis, but this is something which you should be able to do for transient analysis also, okay? Now tell me one thing. Mm, in this curve, if we had assumed that beta n is equal to beta p, you remember? Yes, sir. And that is why the c or this uh, this uh, inflection point was coming at almost like VDD by 2. Now, what would happen if I change, uh, if I make beta n stronger than beta p? So it will fall down faster. It will fall down faster. Uh, so this is not a time wala curve. Na? This is V out by V in wala curve. So what happens mm -hmm. to this curve? I think it will shift towards left. It will shift towards left. What happens if I make beta p is greater than much greater than beta n? It will shift, shift towards right. right. Shift right. Yeah. So uh, such curves, you know, such transistors, which we have, such inverters or such gates, where we have uh, uh, beta n not equal to beta p, you would notice that the the inflection point will be on either side of VDD by two. Okay, these are called skewed gates. There is importance, there is a relevance for these gates. Uh, we will look at that a little later in the course. But I just want you to keep that in your mind. You know, park it for yourself that uh, this is how uh, like this this characteristic that we just did can be used to represent skewed gates also. And this V out by V in curve can be used to actually represent any other gate also. Just that because of different beta ratio, your curve could be over here or over here. So, Are you able to see this? So, yes. So what do you mean by the other gates and this? Like NAND gate, NOR gate, XOR gate. 
five input NAND gate, two input NAND gate, three input NAND gate, all the various range of gates that you may want to use in your designs later. So, so both of the, all these gates will have these kind of characteristics only. Yeah, all these curves will have V out by V in characteristic. Is it not? Same. Okay. The trend not, will be not the same. same. Not same because beta ratio will be different. They will have slightly different. But the trend would be same, right? Yeah. So the intent, the intent to say is that uh, you will be able to, like by using exactly the same method as we use for the inverter, you should be able to build transfer characteristics for any other gate also. So sir, like, can I also say that with the inverter itself, the inverter structure only, if I change the beta ratios in the inverter structure, I can get the different characteristics of the other gates also. Right? This is um, what you're saying. I mean, here. Yeah. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that if you change the beta ratio, you will get different characteristics. What I'm also saying is that by using the same method, you can build characteristics of other gates also, which if they are inverting gates would be very similar to the inverter characteristics. If they're non-inverting gates, the characteristics would be different. But by using the same method, you can arrive at transfer characteristics of any curve. Like we, did, so like we did with the current graph, like intersecting points. Okay. So, but like, what is the relevance of this changes beta ratio? I mean, as a designer, why I'm looking at this? Uh, because at times, so as I mentioned, we will cover it later also, but since there's a question, uh, see at times we may want my inverter to not switch. So next slide we will see. At times, for example, if we see this, if we look at this over here, suppose this is the characteristic that, that, we have designed for our inverter. Hmm. Now what happens? Let V in change by even this much value. Hmm. V in can now change by this much value, but output will not change. Are you able to see this? Okay. So, so but in also this curve itself, it will mean that uh, the PMOS will be in my, like the for. PMOS to be PMOS and uh, NMOS current to be equal the pull down pull down current. So that means the linear current of NMOS will be sufficient to counter the energy current of the PMOS. So for this, for this particular curve, the PMOS is much bigger than the NMOS. Okay. Oh, yeah, so sorry. the saturation current of the NMOS will be more than easily taken care of by the linear current of the PMOS. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, so now what has happened? My low noise margin, I have increased. But what happened to the high noise margin? Now, if my input was at one over here, even a small uh, blip would mean my output will go to one. So my high noise margin has reduced. Okay, yeah, that's the relevance of this beta ratio. Yeah, so if you change the skew ratio, if you change the skewing and uh, the beta ratio, then you will essentially end up changing the noise margins that your gate would have. Okay, we'll just come to that. In the meanwhile, I saw that someone had a question. Faisal, you had a question. So, uh, so I understood uh, if beta P is greater than beta N, then the curve is shifting towards right and uh, vice versa, it is shifting towards left. But like, why is it happening? I'm. Jai to bhi Raghav ka bhi yehi sawal tha na. Raghav ka bhi to yehi sawal tha. If beta p is much greater than beta n, then yes, the saturation current of n mos is much lesser than even the linear current of p mos. Uh, yeah, okay, okay, sir. So even with the you know even though n mos is trying to sink as much current as it can, yes, the sir. linear current of the p mos is so high that it kind of does not allow the output capacitance to discharge. Okay. Okay, we are not doing transient analysis yet, but what we are saying is that the, uh, the current uh, of the PMOS in the linear region is so high that uh, NMOS even in saturation cannot sink more current. Okay. That is where my characteristics become something like this. Yes, uh, can you please explain this low noise and high noise? Yeah, I will just come to that. I will okay. just come. Okay. There's a separate site for that. Okay, sir. Yeah. Vaishnav? 
sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, so you are saying that uh, with the help of this uh, inverter characteristics, we are we can build uh, other characteristics like NOR gate and no. I said by using the method of how we built the inverter characteristics, we should be able to build characteristics for any other gate also. Oh, so uh, by that you mean like uh, IDSN equal to IDSP, what we do, uh, even there exactly. uh, we are supposed to make the currents equal. Okay. Exactly. Thank you. Okay. So we're talking about the method, not exactly that inverter wale ko wahan chip denge. Sir, so just a small follow up in this only. So for example, when you were saying that we can extend this method to other gates also, they would be looking at the what the current is going in the pull up network and the pull down network as a whole, right? And then we will have to apply this kind of characteristics. Yes. Okay. We will talk about pull up network and pull down network, and we will have to keep other inputs in such a situation that they do not influence the output. Okay. So I did not, I still didn't understand the last point uh, they, that the uh, other gates collapse into equivalent inverter. Yeah, so if there is an inverting gate, let us say a NAND gate. Hmm? Let us say there is a NAND gate. And my one input is already, let us say, one. This input was zero. This input B was zero. Now what happens? When B goes from zero to one, what will happen? If you want to find the transfer characteristics, yeah, if you want to find the transfer characteristics of this gate now, what would you do? You would you would keep B at different values of uh, voltage. V and you will gradually change. And do you realize that this this inverter uh, or this NMOS is just like a, some on resistance R on, and this P MOS is actually off. So this doesn't even figure in into our analysis at such a high resistance. So we are essentially looking at IDP and IDN. This can sync as much current because it is fully one. How was the other uh, transistor off that R off which you just fixed? Because the input is one, so the PMOS is off there. Okay, yeah, PMOS is off. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so okay. this NAND gate, do you see it is kind of collapsed into an inverter? Oh, okay, okay, I understand. Hmm? Okay. So that is what we mean by that statement, nothing else. So um, about, you know, the skewed gate influencing the characteristics of other gates. So when when this collapses into an equivalent uh, inverter, it will also 